consolation. Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on me.
by your power preserve us, by your wisdom instruct us, and by your hand protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is from Job chapter 38. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by the words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling veil, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come in no farther, and here shall you, your proud ways be stopped. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. We'll now sing together Psalm 107. great in 
endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. Word of God, word of love. Thanks be to God. This morning's sermon video comes to us from Dan Fugate from the Senate office. Grace to and peace from God our Creator and from Jesus Christ, our crucified, risen, and ascended Savior. Amen. I grew up in Sinclair Shores, Michigan, a suburb on the east side of Detroit, and oh so creatively named, Sinclair Shores is on the shores of Lake, Lake St. Clair. Now, Lake St. Clair is a big Lake. I read one place that it is 670 square miles and another that it is 460 square miles. I, I don't know what accounts for the discrepancy, but I do know this. It is big. It's 26 miles across. Lake St. Clair is part of the Great Lakes system. 90% of the water in Lake Ontario has passed through Lake St. Clair. It's sometimes referred to as the sixth Great Lake. Every so often, someone in Congress introduces a bill 
to officially name Lake St. Clair a Great Lake, but so far none of those bills have ever became law. St. Clair Shores has 14 miles of lake shore and canals, but it's only about two miles wide east to west. It's not an exaggeration to say that the city is dominated by the lake. If you grow up in St. Clair Shores, you have to have a healthy appreciation for the beauty, the power, and the danger of Lake St. Clair. I remember as a kid too many times the principal coming into the classroom and speaking in hushed tones with the teacher and then gently telling us about a fellow student who had drowned. Our city offered free swimming lessons every summer and in 10th grade physical education we had to be able to keep afloat for 50 minutes um, however we wanted to in the deep end of our school's pool. We had to be able to swim a mile in order to pass P.E. Probably most everyone in Sinclair Shores has had an experience of being out in the water on a beautiful summer day, sun shining, not a cloud in the sky, when suddenly there's a flash of lightning or a clap of thunder or a dark cloud, and in a matter of no time, you find yourself in a terrible storm, sometimes too far from shore, to get there before the worst of the storm hits. Of course, I was reminded of that by today's Gospel. We're told that Jesus was tired. He'd been teaching to the crowd all day, and it was a large crowd, large enough that he had to teach them from a boat so that he could be heard. He taught them about the Kingdom of God, about not hiding their lamps under baskets, about mustard seeds that grew into great shrubs. Not everybody understood. Not everyone listened. Not everyone heard. It's at the end of the day, Jesus is tired, and he tells his disciples that they should head over to the other side of the lake. The scriptures tell us they took Jesus just as he was. This was an opportunity for them to look after Jesus, and so they say, Jesus, lay down and have a rest. Jesus gets comfortable on the cushion in the stern, and he falls asleep. The first part of the trip was probably relaxing. The sun was sinking toward the horizon, the water lapped gently and rhythmically against the side of the boat, and the wind rippled gently through the sails. But then everything changes. This storm blows up. The winds are threatening to overwhelm the boat. But Jesus is still sleeping peacefully. Some of Jesus' disciples had fished for a living. They were familiar with the lake. They no doubt had a healthy appreciation for its beauty its power, and its danger. I know I sometimes read those who say that because they fished for a living, they were comfortable on the water. But I wonder if the opposite were true for this storm. Eventually the disciples can't stand it anymore. They wake Jesus up. Teacher, don't you care that we are perishing? Jesus wakes up rebukes the wind and says to the sea, Peace, be still. And there is a dead calm. It's a dramatic story. You can't help but be drawn into it because we all know what storms are like. We know what it feels like when a peaceful place is turned into a frightening and dangerous place by the wind whether it's hurricanes or tornadoes or high winds. But this isn't just about those kinds of storms. It's also about the storms we face more often. The storms of illness, the storms of unemployment, the storms of broken relationships, the storms of pandemic, the storms of the death of loved ones, the storms of loneliness, the storms of depression. These are the storms we face much more often. 
These are the storms that make us feel out of control, of being overwhelmed by the demands of our lives and our emotions. These are the storms that make little things feel impossible. These are the storms that make us afraid that we won't be able to cope. That's what the disciples felt as the storm raged around them. They hadn't sunk, but they could see that they might. It's interesting because as the storm raged around them, a storm also raged within them. They didn't cry out to Jesus, help! Instead they said, don't you care? They weren't just afraid that they were drowning. They were afraid that they had been abandoned. We know what the voices of a storm sound like. When things go wrong, we think those kind of things ourselves. The voices of the storm are voices of blame, of powerlessness, of hopelessness, of abandonment. This is what saps our courage, our confidence, and our resolve. It's so important to remember that Jesus was in the boat with them. Because he had the power to calm even wind and wave, he could have calmed the storm from somewhere safe and dry, like far off on the shore. But he didn't do that. He was in the midst of the storm, right in the middle of the boat in which they stood. Dr. Bryant Kirkland was the pastor of Fifth Presbyterian Church in Manhattan for more than 25 years, and in that time he preached hundreds and hundreds of sermons. And there was one thing he preached over and over again. He said it so many times that this phrase became synonymous with his name. The phrase that Dr. Kirkland preached so many times was this. You can't go it alone in New York. You can't go it alone in New York. Of course, Dr. Kirkland was right. You can't go it alone in New York. But the truth is, you can't go it alone in Paducah, or Seymour, or St. John, or Louisville, or Fort Wayne, or Brownsburg. You can't go it alone anywhere. God is a God of relationships. We've been created to be in relationship with God and with one another. We are loved by God and we are God's beloved children and God calls us to love one another. We don't have to go it alone and we don't go it alone because Jesus is right in the boat with us. And we are called to be right in the boat with others. There are times when life is tough and I don't have to tell you that. Whether it's this pandemic or broken relationships or death or anxiety, depression, an estranged child, a boss who makes your work life difficult, whatever it is, life can be tough and we've all experienced it. We've all experienced storms. We've all experienced fear. We've all had times when we wanted to cry out, don't you care? My friends, God's love for us is revealed in a very specific way. God sent His Son, Jesus, into our world, and Jesus was born as a baby in Bethlehem, experienced what you and I do, and then He died on the cross. By the power of God's love, Jesus rose from the grave. He rose from death to new life so that we might share new life with him here and now and for all eternity. There is nothing in all creation that can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus. When storms rage around us within and without, Jesus is with us. He's right in the boat in which we find ourselves. And we know we can't go it alone. Jesus is with us, but we're also called to be there for others. We're called to be in that boat for and with others. We don't have to go it alone because Jesus is with us, and we're called to be with others in love as well.
Amen.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You laid the foundations of the earth, and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation, that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You keep watch over all nations. You pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate us from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You dwell with us in the faith community. We pray for our leaders, and especially Bill, Bob, Steve, John, George, Jack, Kathy, Rocky, Martha, Dale, and Eric. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness that through their leadership you may be exalted in this assembly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, dear Heavenly Father, we ask for your peace and for blessings and healing for those in our hearts and those we name above, especially at this time for the family and friends of Melba Cruz, for Ryan and Kelly, and others that we name. Your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers and for fathers who have lost children. Bless and strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. You'll be seated. We'll uh, say the blessing of the fathers. Gracious God, pour out your spirit on all fathers. Grant to them keen insight into their children's needs. Help them to be faithful examples of truth and love. Soften their hearts so that they might hear their children's cries. Strengthen their resolve to be men of commitment and faith. In times of sorrow and disappointment, let them know that you are by their side. In times of doubt and confusion, show them the way. In times of happiness and joy, let them see your face in all that is good and right and true. In all times, sustain them with the knowledge that they are beloved children. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all, always, and also with you. We'll continue with the prayer our Father has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Are there any announcements this morning? No? May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of 